Welcome to Brewer's Choice. Today we're going to make a great beer using grain and hops. This is a simple way to improve a standard beer using just the kit and kilo. Add your grain and hops and I'm sure you'll find the beer that you're drinking will be much, much better than anything you've had before. Follow these instructions and I'm sure you'll make a great beer every time. The number one rule of brewing is sanitization and if you get your sanitization right while brewing, chances are you're not going to have any bad beers in the future. So the first step we're going to do today in uh, sanitization is to uh, sanitize our fermenter. So we're going to take the fermenter and we're going to make sure that all parts of it are sanitized. Now in any sanitization process, or there's two part process, firstly is to clean it, the second is to sanitize it. Now I've already gone through with some brewer's detergent, clean this thing out to make sure there's no solid bits of material anywhere inside uh, the fermenter. There is solid bits of material in there, and it doesn't matter how microscopic they are, if they're in there, the sanitization, the steriliser is not going to be able to get onto the surface of the fermenter and remove any bacteria. So first off we've given it a good wash with uh, brewer's detergent and now we're going to sanitise it. The easiest way to do that is by make, mixing up some uh, steriliser into a spray bottle, spraying that into your fermenter. Now when you do that, you need to make sure that the whole surface is covered and once it's covered it stays wet for about two minutes. I'm using a no rinse steriliser so that means we can spray it on, leave it for two minutes and then just go straight into uh, brewing after that. We don't need to rinse it with water. Certainly in Brisbane if you, uh, if you feel a need to rinse it with water I don't think there's any real problem with that because Brisbane uh, water is quite sanitary. Assuming you're not using a garden hose or anything else to, uh, to, fill up your, to wash or to fill up your fermenter. A couple of tips when you're fermenting. Number one, your tap. Make sure that you unscrew the tap on your fermenter after you've used it every time and you clean out the area around the tap inside the fermenter. You'll often find there's a lot of uh, muck just sitting in there and even though you've cleaned out the whole of the fermenter, you'll still find muck around the thread. So take your tap out, clean all of the area around the inside and also give your tap a good squirt on the inside as well. The second thing you need to do is make sure that the o-ring that you have for your uh, fermenter lid that you take that out and clean around underneath as well because you'll often find bacteria in there. So I've squirted the lid, I'm going to put the o-ring in over the top of that now and, uh, and give it another quick squirt and that o-ring should be clean. While you're at it I'd also say put some steriliser into your airlock as well and make sure that that's nice and clean. Now we leave it for two minutes, our fermenter is ready to go. If you're not ready to put your beer in straight away, put the lid back on and, and put it aside. But don't leave it for half a day or a day or, or sanitise it the previous day. Do it just before you're about to start brewing. Again, you don't want to get bacteria and wild yeast into your fermenter while it's waiting to put your beer in. The first thing we're going to do is to steep the grain. There's a number of different types of grain and the grains that we steep are what we call specialty grains. They don't need a whole involved mash process. All they need to do is just to sit in some uh, warm water for about 30 minutes to extract all of the flavours out of it. Most tins that you buy on the shelves, or all tins that you buy on the shelves, use a liquid malt extract. And that's come from grains a long time ago, it's been processed, it's been dehydrated, it's lost a lot of its fresh flavours. By using some grain in your beer, what you're doing is adding back some of the very fresh flavours that the grain imparts and some of the aroma from that. So we're going to put the grain into a bowl, and we're going to pour in about a litre of boiling water, uh, a litre of hot water. So we boiled it a little while ago and it's cooled down. 70 degrees idea is ideal. Uh, and we're just going to leave that for about 30 minutes. Now rather than leaving it open so it picks up a whole lot of uh, bacteria, we're just going to put some glad wrap over the top and that'll just keep it uh, a nice sterile environment until we're ready to use it. If that's the grain done, all those flavours now of that grain are going to steep out into that water. And what we are making is effectively a beer wort. So the water will have all of that grain flavour infused into it and we're going to be using that and adding that to the beer down the track. 30 minutes is up. We're going to take the glad wrap off the bowl. You can see a nice brown liquid in here. And we're going to now pour that into the saucepan through a sieve to strain out all of that grain and just keep the beer wort that's in the bottom. So we're going to pour this through the sieve and keep the grain out. 
We don't want to boil the grain. If we boil the grain, then we'll extract too many uh, bitter tasting tannins out of it, and uh, that will ruin the flavour of your of your wort. Just going to pour in a litre of water now to rinse that grain and make sure we wash all the flavour out. Again, use warm water, it doesn't have to be boiling. A little bit of a squeeze, but not much. You can use a hop bag or a grain bag instead of a sieve. Put the grain in and put that into the, and drain it through a, uh, through a muslin bag. I personally prefer just to use a sieve. And then we can throw out the grain afterwards. It's of no use anymore. Great compost in the garden. We're going to bring that to a boil now for about five minutes. And that, the idea of that is if there is any bacteria in that grain, it's going to be killed off in the boiling process. We'll put the lid on the top just to get, bring it to a boil. Now be careful because once it does start boiling, it will froth up. And if you're not keeping an eye on it and get the lid off, you will make a hell of a mess all over your stove. The next thing we're going to do is to get our uh, tin of, uh, of uh, liquid malt ready to, uh, to use. Now the liquid malt inside, if you shake the tin, you'll see it's a very thick, gooey substance. It's a pain in the neck to try and pour that into your fermenter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the lid off. There's a yeast underneath. Take the yeast away as well. I put the tin into a sink with some uh, boiling water or some hot water out of your uh, tap. and we're going to leave it there for it to slowly warm up. So about 10 minutes sitting in there while you're doing everything else uh, will make sure that that liquid malt runs a lot more easily into your fermenter. We've got the grain boiling now, or the, the beer wort made from the juice that's been extracted from that grain. We have that boiling now, and it's also a great time if we want to add some extra flavor into our beer to add some fresh hops. Again, your tins either won't have any fresh hops in them, or if they do have hops, they'll often have a chemical hop. So what we're going to do is put in some fresh hops, which will give it some really fresh flavors over the top of the beer. Fresh hops normally come in a pellet, in a pellet, um, a green like that, compressed leaves off, off the lupin plant. So we're going to tip in about 15 grams of hops, just let them boil for five minutes, and then we'll turn the uh, saucepan off. All right, take the lid off. Just open up the hops, pour them in. We're going to let them just boil for five minutes to uh, extract some of that flavour. So we're going to put the, uh, the tin of malt into the tin now, into the fermenter, sorry. I think it's uh, ready to go. Just make sure if it's been in boiling water, you don't boil, burn your hands while trying to do it. It can get very hot uh, while you're trying to open it. Tip it in. As you can see, it's it's fairly thin now, quite dark. Uh, it's much thicker if you haven't heated it. Now I'll grab a spoon. You can use some hot water to rinse this out afterwards just to make sure you get all of the malt out of the tin. Now pour the grain wort and the hops into the fermenter and stir it. Now there's still a bit of stuff left in the bottom of this tin, so what I'm going to do is grab some hot water. Uh, you'll need about an extra litre of hot water into to pour into your fermenter to mix in the powder. So grab a litre of hot water, this is when it gets really hot. Uh, just rinse your tin out, pour all of the extra water in there and it's time to add the, uh, the powder as well. With the hot water in here now, we're going to add the powder. Uh, in this case, uh, the more malt you have in your powder, 
uh, the better the beer. You can use dextrose, never use sugar because sugar will give you an off cidery flavour in your beer. Use either dextrose as a basic one or, or a dextrose malt mix or even for some beers 100% malt. So we're going to tip in the powder uh, and mix that in as well as possible. When we're doing the mixing we want to get a lot of froth into the brew. The more air that's in this brew the healthier the yeast will work and the more fermented out will be the powder, more alcohol, better tasting beer. Mix it really well until you've got that all dissolved, no lumps sitting on the bottom. Now the powder and the malt from the tin is pretty much all dissolved in here now, so we're going to add the water to take it up to 23 litres. It's a good idea to know exactly where that is on your fermenter the first time before you start. Normally on these it's round about the ridge line there, but go through and check it before you do. And as a quick tip as well, before you start pouring anything into your fermenter, do make sure that the tap is closed. On more than the odd occasion people leave that tap open and there's a hell of a mess all over their floor. So what we want to do is get the temperature down to round about 22 to 25 degrees. If we've already got a litre or two of boiling water in here, we need ideally to use some chilled water to get that temperature down very quickly. We don't want to leave it open and waiting for it to cool down before we put the yeast in, otherwise again we'll get bacteria wild yeast in there and that will ruin your beer. So the best way to do it, and particularly in summer, is to chill down 5 or 10 litres of water and use that first and then use the, uh, your tap water to take it up to the 23 litres. So I'm going to pour in uh, 10 litres here. I've just bought a, uh, uh, some spring water from Woolworths and pour that in. Now it doesn't ha you don't have to use spring water, it will help the flavour of your beer slightly but there's a lot of other ways to improve your beer before you go to using spring water. If you have a water filter, use it, uh, otherwise buy it once and then just each time give it a bit of a sterilise, fill it up with water, throw it into your fridge the night before you do your brewing and, uh, and reuse it for the next day. So I'm going to top it up now with all the cold water. All right, I've got my 23 litres of water in. I'm going to give it a really good stir now. What I want is a lot of froth on the top of the uh, on the top of the wort inside here. So a really good vigorous stir, mixing it around, making sure there's no solid bits left on the bottom, and plenty of bubbles on the top. So it's got lots of oxygen for the yeast to to use when it's multiplying and uh, fermenting. Once I've done that, I'm going to put in the yeast. So in summary, you can make a great beer using the yeast that's in the top of your tin, but if you want a really easy way to upgrade your beer, change your yeast, grab one of these from your local homebrew store, you'll wind up with a much better beer for very, very little work. I'm going to open it now and sprinkle it in uh, while it's still frothing on the top. You can give it a very gentle uh, stir with your spoon, but you'll find inevitably you wind up with it all over the arm of your spoon. So uh, either just give it a little shake or even just leave it. It'll absorb uh, the uh, fluid out of the beer very quickly and start working. The next step, close up your fermenter. Now you have uh, your fermenter lid, your airlock. I strongly recommend that you put your airlock into your fermenter lid before you put it on top of your fermenter. Uh, plenty of people have uh, tried to put it in after they've screwed the lid on and the grommet will inevitably fall into your fermenter, uh, drop to the bottom and you won't be able to get it out. So put your airlock in first, screw your lid on nice and tight. Now you'll find as well, uh, particularly with new lids, that uh, the, uh, the surface here is quite rough and once you screw this on and you've left it for a few days, particularly if you have spilt beer around the edge, it's almost impossible to unscrew the lid. Easiest way around this is just to grab some keg lube, uh, a lubricant that uh, doesn't affect your head on your beer or the taste. Just put a little bit of that around the O-ring. That'll make sure when you, when you screw it on, you get a really nice tight seal on your lid and it's easy to undo at the end of your fermentation. So we're going to screw it on nice and tight. And then we're going to put some water in the airlock. Now using clean water is a good idea. What I do is just use a little bit that's left in the kettle and put that in and what we're aiming for is to fill up 
the two sides just halfway up. Now if you have a good uh, seal on your fermenter, you'll find that the levels of the two, uh, two sides are not the same, one's up, one's down. Uh, and the more you tighten it, the, the greater that difference will be. If you find that the levels come back together very quickly, what you have is an air leak. And uh, you might want to replace your O-ring on your fermenter um, as it, and the grommet around the base of your airlock. You might want to replace those so you don't get an air leak. While it's not uh, vital to your brewing, uh, it does help you later on because once it starts, uh, the bubbles start coming out as the yeast starts the fermentation process. If you have an air leak, those bubbles won't come out your airlock, they'll come out the, the, the air leak instead. And many people ring up our stores and say, it's not bubbling, should I throw the beer out? 99% of the time, it's simply an air leak. So if it's not bubbling, have a look, make sure that the two levels are different. And, and if they are, and it's not bubbling, then you've got a chance that there's a problem. But generally, you'll find that there isn't a, uh, there isn't a problem. It's just the, the CO2 that's being produced leaking out the sides or leaking out the grommet. We're going to put this away now. Um, it's somewhere dark and cool. The cooler you can, uh, you can store it, the better, depending on your yeast. For an average tin yeast, you're looking somewhere between about 18 degrees to 25 degrees. I'd strongly recommend that you never have it over 25 degrees. It will brew faster, but it won't taste nearly as good. It'll produce a whole lot of byproducts and make your beer taste really awful. So brew it as cool as you can. In summer, that can be a bit of an issue. Uh, easy ways to do it, put it in an air-conditioned room, put it onto a cement slab or onto a bathroom floor with the tiles. That will help to keep it cool. Uh, if that doesn't work, a wet towel around the outside of your fermenter, perhaps have it sitting in a little bit of water so that the uh, ends of the towels are sitting in the water and, and, and soaking up that water. And as the breeze goes past, that will cool it down, take two or three degrees off, your, off the temperature of your fermenter. And uh, if it's still not working, you can freeze up some Coke bottles, put a couple of Coke bottles in that water in the morning, change them over with two out of the freezer at night, put them into there and, and just swap your Coke bottle, frozen Coke bottles of water day and night and you'll find that that keeps your fermenter nice and cool. It should then brew somewhere between seven and 10 days roughly. And uh, at that point, it'll be ready to, uh, to test to see that it's, the fermentation is finished. All right, we've had the beer brewing now for uh, about 10 days. Um, we've, uh, what we've seen is that the level has, has pretty much got back to, or the levels here are pretty much the same. It's doing a bubble about once a minute. Now it may well continue to do a bubble for, for about once a minute for a very long time. So we're looking uh, roughly about a level water there, bubble once a minute, you know you're pretty much there. Now you'll know it's also have uh, worked if you find it's got a high tide sponge mark around there, you'll see that. And if you look in through the inside, you'll see it'll have some bubbles and foam and stuff. So it's certainly been working. The way now to test that it has actually finished brewing is by using a hydrometer. Now most uh, explosions of bottles that you hear about, I can guarantee will be the result of the brewer not using a hydrometer to test that the beer has completely brewed out. What's happening is because, usually because it's cooler weather, the yeast has been working more slowly. It hasn't got around to eating all of the sugar that's in here. And so there is still some sugar sitting in this mix here that, uh, that hasn't been brewed out. If you put that into your bottles and you add some extra sugar and the yeast keeps on working, it produces twice as much gas as it should and the bottle explodes. Only way to guarantee that the yeast in here has eaten all of the sugar that needs to be eaten before you put it into the bottle is to test it with a hydrometer. So every time, use a hydrometer te to test it. Now the easiest way to do the hydrometer test, use the tube that the hydrometer comes in, take out the foam, take out the piece of paper, put your hydrometer in it, put it underneath the tap, fill it up, and uh, take the reading from uh, the, the top of the level once the, of the beer once the hydrometer is floating in here. Alrighty, hydrometer's in, open the tap, You'll see it's got, um, it's got some bubbles around it. Give it a little spin, that'll get rid of any bubbles on it. Just put it down for a little while. Let all of the uh, muck that's, that's uh, uh, gone into it settle to the bottom. And once you've done that, we can take a reading straight across the level of the beer to see whether or not it's been finished. 
Now, it's not enough just to do a hydrometer reading. What we're aiming for, of course, is, is a reading round about uh, 1010. If you have a look at your hydrometer, there's a red mark usually at the uh, point that says one. One is the specific gravity for water, and we're looking at beer, which is a bit thicker than water, being somewhere higher than one. So generally around about uh, 1008 up to about 1015, depending on how much sugar and other ingredients you put into your, uh, into your beer. Now, in beer talk, we call it uh, one a thousand, and then uh, we're looking at about a thousand and eight thousand and fifteen. Now, you need to do it one day, wait for 24 hours, repeat the process again, and make sure that the reading is the same. If the reading's dropped a little, then your yeast is still fermenting all of the sugars in your beer, and you need to leave it for a day or for two days, then do the readings again. What we're aiming for is two readings, exactly the same over two days. If it's exactly the same, you know the yeast has finished its work, it's ready to go into the bottle. If the yeast has finished and you have readings over two days, what we're going to do is add findings in. Now it's an optional process, but it does help to pull a lot of the sediment down to the bottom of your fermenter. If you're using one of the canned yeasts, using a finding is not a bad idea because that will give you firmer sediment packed down on the bottom and a cleaner beer. So we're going to grab a, uh, a packet of findings Cut that open and put it into a sterilised jug. And we're going to add about 250 mils of warm water. It doesn't need to be boiling water again. Again, it's just uh, water that I've had in the jug that's boiled previously. And I'm going to fill it up to about 250 mils or one cup. So you can do this in a cup. Um, we're going to open up the fermenter. Take that out so we don't wind up sucking water back into the fermenter as we do this. And we just pour the findings into the beer. Alrighty, so now we're going to seal it up again and we're going to leave it there for 24 hours to let the findings pull all of the sediment down into the uh, bottom of your fermenter. It's 24 hours and the findings has dropped all the sediment to the bottom of the fermenter and now it's time for us to do the bottling. Now with your bottles, whichever type of bottles you use, plastic bottles or glass bottles, they need to be washed and then they need to be sterilised. Two stages, make sure there's no solid material inside, use a, uh, a cleaner first, brewer's detergent or brew clean, make sure it's clean inside then once you've done that, you need to sanitise it. Do your sanitisation just immediately before you bottle, again, so you're not leaving them sitting there open for wild yeast and bacteria to fall inside. Now, plastic bottles, glass bottles, both are as good as each other. Today, we're going to use a glass bottle. If you are using either of them, make sure that the lids that you're using have also been sanitised at the same time. Now, your fermenter, particularly if it's been sitting out over the, uh, the last week, it's quite possible that you've had a lot of flies and little insects that have been very interested in the nozzle of your tap. So part of the process of sterilization first is to make sure that your uh, nozzle is nice and clean. We get some fermenter, some uh, sanitizer up in there and uh, just make sure it is a, a nice clean nozzle. You want to make sure as well, and I've already sterilized it, that your uh, bottling tube is also nice and clean and it's been sterilized. Now you'll notice with the bottling tube it has a small point on the end which pushes in and out. That's a little valve that stops the beer flowing out of the, of the, uh, the bottling tube when you don't have a bottle in it. Take your bottling tube, put it up into the tap, being careful when you push it in not to push too hard or you may push the tap right out of your fermenter and you'll have a hell of a mess. So it should fit just inside. You can also use a piece of hose and the hose from the tap onto your uh, bottling tube if you want a bit more flexibility. So now that it's on, we're going to take our beer bottle, which has been cleaned, and we're going to put it into it and lift it up until it opens the valve, pushes up the valve and starts doing it. Turn the tap on and away you go. Take your airlock out as well so that you don't pull any of that water in. All right, so up to the edge of the neck, take it off and once you pull the tube out you'll find the level drops just enough so it's not quite a full a full bottle. Now your bottling your valve you notice it'll closed. Now it's not absolutely watertight so don't do this over your carpet but you can now just keep on grabbing bottles and bringing them up and filling them up. Once you've done it it's time to add the sugar in. 
The purpose of the sugar is to take the yeast that's still in your bottle, it's going to eat that sugar, it's going to produce some more carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide will infuse itself into your beer and produce the bubbles. So for a tallie we're going to take two of these uh, uh, carbonation drops they're called and we put them in, one, two, and then either screw on your plastic cap or put on your beer cap under your capper and close it. After that, once you've done all of your bottles, put them somewhere cool and dark for the next at least two weeks to allow the sugar, the yeast to eat the sugar and to carbonate your bottles. All right, after two weeks, your bottle should be ready to drink. So put it in a fridge, cool one down, crack the lid, and hopefully you'll have a fantastic beer. If you don't, make sure you give us a call on 1300 2 Brew, T-O-B-R-E-W, and we'll help you with all your problems. But I'm sure you'll have a great beer right from day one if you follow all these instructions. Thanks a lot. Happy drinking.